Dear viewers and listeners, welcome to the William Gomez podcast. Today, more than one in every four children in the United Kingdom lives in poverty. When kids grow up poor, they miss out. And so do the rest of us. They miss out in things most children take for granted. Warm clothes, school trips, having friends over for tea, they perform oars in school and earn less money as adults. However, poverty is not inevitable. With appropriate policies, any child can succeed in life and will, and we all benefit from a stronger economy and a healthier and more just society. Any family can fall on hard times and find it difficult to make ends meet. Unfortunately, work doesn't provide a granted path out of poverty in the United Kingdom. No one in the UK should go hungry, not least children. Good, nutritious food is a right, not a privilege. Councillor Bob Webb will deliver a speech on the issues of right to food, poverty, and its impact on your children. Bob Webb is a city of your councillor. He's the shadow executive member of the Labour Group on City of York Council with responsibility for children, education, and communities. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, William. Uh, thank you for that introduction. And uh, I agree, poverty isn't inevitable. Um, and it's a shame that so many children and young families um, are in poverty. And I'll spend just a uh, hope for a few minutes of your time just explaining a little bit about um, food poverty in York, what is being done to help, um, what we can do locally to maybe make some improvements and potentially just touch on what I think needs to happen nationally. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you for your time. Um, I think to start with, uh, you would expect in a city like York that most people think that York is a very affluent city. Um, it seems very nice to visit uh, and it is a wonderful place to live, but um, that, that actually does mask some quite ingrained poverty in some of our communities. Um, and this really does affect small but definitive groups of people. And I think as a city uh, in York, because it affects small groups of people and doesn't affect large groups of the population in a way that there is there are some worse factors there because you're in a situation where we don't necessarily as a council get the the money to support those families in the way we'd want um, and I think no matter what colour of party you are in York you'd probably agree with the fact that York doesn't get funded like it, other authorities do um, and that does mean that those small but uh, definite groups of people that really are in poverty don't necessarily get as much support as they might get elsewhere. And that might not just be food poverty, that might be fuel poverty. Um, they're all just varying for forms of poverty. Let's, let's make it clear. And I'm glad that you've also outlined that you know, this is not anyone's fault. This is not an individual's fault that they themselves have found themselves in poverty. This is an issue with the benefit system, potentially. This is uh, individual challenging life experiences. This is uh, a lack of support. And particularly when we're talking about children's poverty, children's food poverty, this, of course, you know, you cannot choose which family you were born into. You cannot choose the circumstances of your family. And that in itself, um, it, it, it's, it's very, very unfair. And, and unfortunately, we do live in a very unfair, unjust society at the moment. And, and more than anything, we live in a very unequal society, which means that you do have a few people who are doing fantastically well. And you have others who are really, really struggling. 
Um, and right away, we have to make it really clear that whilst we can tackle the symptoms of food poverty, there do needs to be some, and, and poverty in general, there do need to be some structural changes on a national level to make a, a real impact on poverty. However, in York, we can do various bits and pieces. And <clears throat> one of the the key things that we have uh, done in York and one of the key reasons you invited me to speak today was that uh, in October um, before Christmas, uh, the Labour Group proposed a motion at our city council meeting um, on the right to food. Now, we are not the first place to do that in the UK. In January last year, Liverpool City Council passed a similar motion. Um, Ian Byrne, uh, the Labour MP for Liverpool West, has also been, also been really, really pushing on this uh, nationally on what uh, almost a, a new deal for people um, and food poverty uh, might look like and really trying to tackle the, the reasons behind injustice in food. Um, so it's not just something that's uh, popped up in York, it's something that's happening in lots of places. I know the Cooperative Party as well have been doing quite a lot of work on this issue. Um, and then closer to home in York, we have a, a situation where we've got lots of great organisations doing great work to support people um, who are uh, experiencing the symptoms of poverty. So whether that is um, in my own ward, you've got Tangor Food Co-op that are providing um, an excellent uh, service to people to try and get low cost quality food uh, onto people's tables. Um, you've got uh, Bell Farm Social Hall that is doing excellent work in really, really working with, with groups and communities that are really, really on the margins, really, really isolated in a lot of cases, but they know their own community and they're serving that community really, really well. I mean, they shouldn't have to, they shouldn't need to. Um, the system should be um, appropriate for them. But right now, um, people are really suffering um, and communities across York are stepping up. I've named a couple. I mean, there's Kitchen for Everyone and there are, there are a great deal more. And of course, throughout the pandemic, um, more of these organisations have, have become more and more important. More of them have become more and more effective. Um, and sadly, um, for a lot of people, they've noticed the need for uh, food banks, whether they be formal or informal. More people have needed access to those uh, services. Um, and that it's, it's, I mean, it's good that people have noticed but it's important to remember that a lot of these, these need, this, this food poverty, existed long before COVID. Um, and whilst COVID has certainly shone a spotlight on the need of some people, um, those issues have existed in Britain for a very, very long time. Um, as well as that, the fact, I suppose, food bank use has increased, and this is this is from the Trussell Trust. This is the formal food bank use. So, 128% uh, increase in food bank parcels being handed out since spring 2015, um, and a 33% increase in the last 12 months. And I think if we're looking forward uh, into the future, unfortunately, I, I really do struggle to see this, the, the picture improving. With the ongoing um, cut to universal credit, with the continuing concerns around universal credit, and of course, with growing concerns around the cost of living in general, particularly with energy costs, fuel costs, um, expected to, with those things expected to rise in the near future, we can only really expect that um, this situation is going to get worse. At the start, you outlined some of the reasons, some of the, the problems that that causes. Um, and for me, I, my focus is, as you said, shadow uh, spokesperson for children and young people. Um, and I would, of course, be focusing on those young people who are going to school hungry, for example, without um, a meal before they leave home. Um, you cannot concentrate in school if you have not been fed. 
um, if you've not, if you're hungry that day. Now, schools are doing an excellent job to try and support those young people and the number of before school clubs, breakfast clubs, things like that, um, that have, have, have been set up are, are excellent. But again, you know, we should not be in a situation in 21st century Britain where a school's having to make sure that a young person has had their breakfast because, you know, the family is really struggling. And there are lots of situations where, you know, parents of young people will be going hungry to make sure that that child has had some breakfast. Um, and we don't want that either. We don't need families. We don't need parents who are going hungry because then they're less able to support their family. They're less able to work. They're less able to look after those young people. And, and therefore it becomes ingrained in that family and it becomes more and more challenging to deal with. And of course, that means we're in a situation where you have children who in some cases will be malnourished. Some cases will be eating um, the food that's the cheapest but not necessarily the healthiest we have children that will be falling behind in schools um and all these things start to add together um and you can understand and you can appreciate how quite quickly in a situation like that it gets out of hand and the longer that a family is experiencing poverty the harder it is for a family to get out of that situation and the more effect and damage that it can have and quite frankly it's just not fair um so um <clears throat> a few of the things that we've done in york as i said earlier we've looked at uh, a right to food motion where we asked for several things one was literally just to get uh, one of the executive members in york we have a, a liberal democrat green uh, ruling administration to get one of those members to sign up to be responsible for food in york um, and at our christmas council meeting in december i asked if the executive had decided who that was going to be unfortunately the time they hadn't looked at that which was a shame but since then and that question that i asked uh, i have now been told um that Councillor Runciman of the Liberal Democrats and Councillor Craghill of the Greens will be jointly uh, working on this. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to look from them yet, but we have some asks and they are that they designate the local area coordinators as food justice champions to make sure that they, those people who work closely with vulnerable communities are aware of what food options are available in the city and make sure that the, the two are connected um that <clears throat> we take all of those individual groups who are doing great work and bring them all together along with vulnerable people along with stakeholders to say well look how can we better distribute this food how can we work more closely with each other to try and um, make sure that we're covering as much of the city as effectively as we can um as well as that um we want to really speak to um speak to formal food banks and informal food banks and speak to their users and see you know has has use increased is there anything missing is there anything that needs improving how can we help um to improve people's daily lives really um following on from that one thing and i was i would make a plea here there is something called the healthy start voucher which um anyone experiencing poverty and if you go to the government website and search for healthy start voucher you can find the the exact criteria but for families with children under four they're entitled if if they're experiencing poverty um, for vouchers for things like fresh fruit veg milk um, for those young children currently york i think our our, um, our uptake of that is about 53 percent um and obviously that means there's lots of there's 47 percent of young families going without that help that they are entitled to so we need to advertise that and make more people aware of it um the council is the liberal democrat green administration is committed to the idea of community hubs and for me if those are going to work in communities like the one i serve then they need to have a food offer and they need to be helping people 
um, with that food. So for me, I would really, really hope that we um, can push forward on that community hubs agenda with a focus on food. And I know through my work on the scrutiny committee in York for children and young people, that's something we are pushing for. Um, and I think for me on a wider level, what I would say is the UK has a real issue here. The UK has committed to the UN sustainability goals, um, uh, sustainable development goals, sorry, of ending hunger by 2030. And that is going to take a huge amount of effort. But there are things that this country can do. And I would really strongly advise people to, to, to take a look at that sustainability goal and to take a look at the work that's being done um, around uh, food poverty around the country because I think that there's work that can be done to improve our farming um, processes there's work that can be done with supermarkets to look at how much they're charging for food how much of their food is wasted um, and I really do think that there are many things we can do to support families but <clears throat> one of the key drivers is thinking about um, why it is that people can't afford that food. And I think it is, quite frankly, because we have an incredibly unequal society. Um, we have some jobs that pay very, very well and some jobs that just don't. And fundamentally, any form of food poverty or fuel poverty or period poverty, whatever it is, it all is just poverty. Um, and the more we can do to, to, to create an equal society in Britain, um, whether that's you know, reducing the gender pay gap, whether that is reducing the difference between the salaries of the top CEO and the, you know, the bottom rung of that company's ladder, you know, whether, whatever we can do to reduce those differences, I think will have a positive impact on poverty. Uh, so in summary, there are great organisations doing great things in York. What we want to do is bring them together, get them working together, speak to the vulnerable people who are experiencing poverty, see how we can best help them. Part of it might well be looking at further community hubs. For example, in the summer holidays, we have kitchens in schools going unused. Is there anything there we could do to help people? So these are all questions that could be answered and that we can work on here in York. But on a national level, I mean, we need to do so much to get this current British government, this conservative government, to turn around and look at what it's doing to the people, the communities, the young people, um, and really start to try and level, level up, not level up, level out our society. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the, thank you for your time and the, the insightful speech.